This is the video game that brings me back to my childhood. I used to love this game and played it really when I was much younger than I really should have been playing a game like this. But there's nothing quite like it. I'm not a big gamer. For me, this was the first-person shooter, one of the last first-person shooters I ever played, in fact, Doom and Doom 2. We're going to talk about everything you need to know to create this effect in Photoshop from the 3D to the subtle shading and adding of textures and color blending and all kinds of crazy styling and amazingness like that. You are going to absolutely love this tutorial. Let's get started right now. Everybody, welcome into this Photoshop tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com and I am so excited. Did I say that loud enough? I'm so excited for this tutorial today because we're going to take a look at creating this Doom text effect, kind of the retro Doom text effect, not the more modern, simple uh, Doom text effect. And I spent a lot of time playing with different textures and, you know, jumping into the original game and actually extracting textures from the actual game to try to use them on the text. And I think I have everything uh, that is needed. In fact, let me just jump over to my screen real quick. If you hop over to tutvid.com, there's a link down in the description of this video. Um, you'll be able to download the Doom brushes. Um, this Doom tech wall, I have a link uh, to that, and also the finished PSD for the file that we're going to create, and also this pattern that I created. So this was, I, I couldn't really find the, the actual sort of pyramid stone pattern that is on the Doom logo and is an important element in the actual Doom logo. So again, go over, check out the link down in the description of this video. You have to sign up for my newsletter. If you're already signed up to the newsletter, just punch your email address in. It's going to pop open a new tab. Make sure your pop-up blockers are shut off, at least temporarily, so you can get to that uh, direct download link. Uh, but with all of that out of the way, I guess let's go ahead um, and take a look at how we can create our own Doom text effect. Let's begin here in Photoshop where we'll create our initial document by going File, New, and I'm going to create a document 2560 by 1440 uh, in dimensions. Go ahead and hit OK. Great. And the background, we're just going to make it gray, so I'm going to hit Command or Control U to bring up Hue Saturation and set the lightness to minus 50. It's going to bring us right to about 50% gray. All right. I'm going to jump over to Google Chrome. We need to download a couple resources. Number one, we need to download the Doom font, and we also need to download this sort of tech wall texture. This is in addition to the stuff you want to download from me. We're actually going to begin with our font. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and grab the type tool. I'm going to choose from my font drop down this Amaze Doom. And the Amaze Doom typeface has left and right fonts. So we're going to begin with left. Um, in fact, just the letter D needs to be uh, left. So we're going to say capital D for uh, Doom. And I'm going to, well, I'm actually not going to commit that change. And then I'm going to say O-O-M. Let me see what it looks like with lowercase. O-O-M. Eh, not really what I want, in fact. Uh, so you can see here, part of the issue, and let me just highlight this, I'm going to make this quite a bit larger. Uh, the size I need is probably 1,200 points, yeah, something like that, I'm going to say. Let's just move this down here closer to the center of our document. We're going to double click here on Doom. Uh, I'm going to select these three letters. I'm going to go capital O-O-M. Uh, and then I'm going to select all three of these, the O's and the M. And instead of being Amaze Doom left, I'm going to go Amaze Doom right. All right, and the reason I'm doing this is because I want this guy here. You can see I want his angle to be, you know, facing the way it's facing. We're going to flip this letter O when we convert this text in just a second. Um, but let's go ahead here and just fill this with the color white. So I'm going to hit the letter X to flip my foreground and background colors. Uh, in fact, you know what? I'm just going to double click on the type this way and change it kind of the more the long-winded way, but double-clicking on my color, uh, my color thumbnail as I just did, commit the change, boom, we've got uh, this white text in the middle of our document here. I'm going to hit Command or Control A, it's going to select all, and then I'm just going to align it to the horizontal and vertical centers of the document. All right, so at this point, we have our type, everything's starting to look good. I'm going to right-click on that type, uh, type layer, and I'm going to choose Convert to Shape. So it's going to convert my type to shape, but more importantly, it's still vector. I can still scale it as large or small as I want. The great thing is I can now begin to edit this type with my Direct and Path Selection tool. So if I go Path Selection, you can see I can actually select the path that makes up the type. I'm going to select the, uh, the Direct Selection tool because this will allow me to select actual parts of my type. The first thing I want to do is draw a selection over the letter O and then hit Command or Control T to free transform and right click and choose flip horizontal. So you can see now the the angles on the bottom of the O 
are exact mirrors of one another, just like they should be for our final finished piece. That's great. Next, what I want to do is select the little, uh, just the one point here up on the top point of the M, and use my right arrow key and nudge it outward a little bit. That needs to be pointed out a little bit more. And the same thing over here with the top left corner of the D. So now I'm just using my uh, my left arrow key and just nudging that way out over there. That's great. Uh, one of the other things we could do is nudge just that. Well, you know, I'm not gonna. That's a little too complex for this. Um, you could end up nudging that out and bumping the path around. I don't want to spend too much time. Trust me, we're gonna spend enough time on this tutorial. Let's drag out a selection over the bottom portion of the letter O. We want to select all of these anchor points you see me, that I've selected here. Holding down my uh, shift key and the up arrow key, I'm gonna nudge the O's up to about. Eh, kind of right about there. That's probably about good. Maybe just... Just like that looks pretty good. All right, next what we need to do is nudge these letters much closer together. So I'm going to select the D and the O and holding down Shift, I'm going to tap my right arrow key once and then my right arrow key one, two, three, four, five times. That's five times without holding down the Shift key. I'm going to grab the O and the M here and Shift and left arrow key and then nudge together one, two, three, four, five, something like that. That actually might be a little bit too close. I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, back out. Select the side. I'm going to go back out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Something like that. All right, now let's grab the letter D, and we need to move that in. So shift in the right arrow key once, twice. I kind of think twice is about what I'm going to roll with here, which means i got to do the same with the M once, twice. There we go. That looks good. So we've kind of compressed these letters together, made them much tighter, flip the letters the way they need to be. We're going to right click and choose new 3D extrusion from selected layer. And sure enough, look at what Photoshop says. Hey, you're about to create a 3D layer. Would you like to switch to 3D workspace? Now, that is not what I expected to happen. Sometimes when you're working with a complex uh, array of paths such as this, Photoshop will say, your path is too complex. We can't uh, create a 3D object or something like that. If that's the case, you can simply jump over into your paths panel, select the direct path in the paths panel, and right click and choose to create a 3D extrusion from that, and it should work. So as you can see here, we didn't have that issue. Um, it's, it's buggy. It is a, it's like a known bug in Photoshop. So sometimes it's going to hit you, sometimes it won't. All right, so now that we're here in the 3D editor, there's a couple things that I want to do. I want to go ahead and set an extrusion depth. Right now it's at almost 1,000 pixels, um, and pixel count in the 3D workspace is somewhat abstract, um, and it's very relative to all kinds of things going on around it. We want to set this to 175 pixels uh, for the scale. Now notice down here in the 3D panel, we have our Doom object selected. Uh, if you're not too familiar with working in 3D, don't worry, I'm going to coach you through everything. Extrusion depth here up in the properties panel with the Doom object selected, we want to set it to 175. Next, we're going to come over here to the sort of uh, distortion or deform tab, that's what it's called, deform. And we're going to uh, tick on Shear, and what I want to do is I want to, well, sometimes it bounces back and forth a little bit. I want to set the, uh, the vertical shear to negative 35 degrees. What that's going to do, if it stays over in that panel, uh, negative 35, it's going to give me this kind of dropped down effect with my extrusion, which is pretty cool. I'm going to go back to Deform, and I'm going to set my taper to, I'm going to try 85%. I may actually go with no taper, but yeah, the taper is going to kind of pull everything inward a little bit. And you can see how quickly we're getting like this pretty decent looking 3D effect here uh, in Photoshop. So this is this is really nice. So hey guys, I want to take a quick moment, a quick time out from this tutorial, let you know that I'm selling a course over on typefit.com. A link just came up somewhere up there in the top corner of the screen. Um, if you pick up a copy of the course, it really helps support the site, helps me continue to create these tutorials and put out more content like this. Yeah, just go ahead and check out the link. All the info is on the page that you will be brought to. I hope you love it. I hope you pick up a copy of course. Let's get right back into the tutorial. Now, next, what I want to do, again, we still have our Doom object selected. I'm going to choose this third option, which is the capping option. I want to set a bevel of 15% to the outer edges of the letters. You can see how we got that nice bevel now. Uh, over here in the Properties panel, I'm going to shut off Cast Shadows. That's going to get rid of this big shadow on the ground. And next, with this Doom object selected, I'm going to go 3D, and I'm going to choose Split Extrusion. This is going to divide this one Doom object into four separate letters. So so a D, an O, an O, and an M. So now what we can do is look, and we've got Doom 2, 3, 4, and original Doom here, and each of these are different letters. So if I shut that one off, we can see that that's the O. I can shut this one off, we can see it's the other O. I can shut this one off, I can see it's the M, and then the original Doom is going to be the letter D. We, we, we sort of want to tilt these letters so they're almost 
Well, let's right click down here on our view and choose to view this extrusion from the top. So now we're looking straight down on our letters. We kind of want our letters to have a little bit of this bow to them. Again, if we look at our original reference image, you can see how they're all kind of tilted a little bit, right? So it's almost like there's this bow across the face of the letters. So what we want to do here is, um, Let's right click and go back to our default view. Uh, what we want to do is with each of these letters, let's begin with the letter, well, let's begin with the two O's, I guess. All right, so we've got this O here. We're going to come over here to our coordinates option. And here on the, the kind of rotation around the Y axis, I want to rotate it by five degrees, but I don't want to rotate it five degrees that way. I want to go negative five degrees because that's going to rotate it the way that I want it to be. Uh, same thing here with O, and in this case, I want to rotate it just straight five degrees because that's going to rotate it the way that I want it to be. And as we rotate this, we might realize we want these letters to be a little bit closer together. We can always do that. Let's go ahead and rotate the D and the M first. Uh, so let's come over here to the M. Now the M, I want to rotate along the Y axis by 12 degrees. So that rotates it, you can see, even more, which means that the original D is going to be negative 12 that way. So now it's kind of broken apart. We're going to nudge it together in just a little bit. Let's right click and choose top and see what this looks like from the top. So you can see, not only do we need to nudge these letters in, but we really need to push them backward a little bit. So with the D here selected, uh, we can choose to move this along like the Z axis we can move it back kind of right about there so it's more in line with what we're doing and we can even then rotate it a little bit more around the Y axis until it kind of fits where we need it to be more like negative 15 maybe is what we want there we go that's great Let's go over here and choose the letter M. Uh, let's push that. And by the way, if you just hover over like these letters in the coordinates area, that you get a little scrubby slider. So I'm going to push that back, maybe to like right about there. And then we're going to try setting this to 15 straight up, see what that looks like. And you can see as I rotate around the Y axis, it looks like it's going to need to be pushed backward on the Z axis just a little bit. And this is all touch and feel. Just like do it, you know, until it looks and feels right. Let's try 349, see what that looks like. Yeah, 349 looks good on the on the Z for the positioning. All right, so let's right click on this again. Let's go back to our default view and look at this from the front. And it looks like the letters now need to be pinched together a little bit more. So looking at this from the front view, we can just select the first O and we can move this along the Y axis. We can nudge it in whichever direction we like. Oh, oh, no, I'm sorry, not the Y axis, what I think of the X axis. So we're gonna nudge this inward just a little bit. Something, eh, something kind of like that. It can be a little finicky. And you can see the arrow key is me. You got to go shift and nudge. Let's go try negative 215. Let's just punch in manually 213. Let's go negative 210. Let's try that. There we go. That's probably good. Uh, let's go to the other one here or the other letter O. And let's just nudge it back a little bit. Let's set it to like, let's try setting it to 155 and see what that looks like. That's a little too tight. Try 165. That's probably about good. And you can see because we're tapering it, we're kind of losing uh, some of the depth of the 3D. We're going we're gonna to fix that in just a second. Uh, let's go to the letter M and just move that over. So let's try setting this to like 555 maybe. Oh, we set it to 55. 555. 555 is a little bit too much. Let's try 565. 565 probably still a little bit too much. Maybe 570. 570 looks pretty good. Um, and that's going to actually change a little bit when we fix the taper. So I think I'll, I'll roll with that. Let's go with the letter D now. Uh, let's try just negative 600 and see what that looks like. That's actually pretty good. I'm just looking. So I, I want it to roughly be about the same distance as the M from the other side of the O. And it's about there. All right. So now we have all of these separate extrusions. Let's hit these little twirl up arrows so we can kind of uh, hide all the different uh, texture sides or, or just sides of the 3D objects. Let's hold down our command or control key and select all four objects like that. And I'm going to go back to the deform tab and I'm going to set taper back to 100 um, percent. And you can see that's going to kind of straighten out our taper. And I, I think that's actually going to work much better for this particular effect. Now, the next thing that we want to do, as I mentioned a moment ago, is extrude or export or whatever. We want to create masks out of each of the faces of this 3D object we've created. So we need a mask for the faces of the letters, a mask for the little bevel around the edges, and also a mask for the extrusion. So the bits that are kind of making the 3D depth 
look 3D. So here's how we're going to do that. There's not really like an export 3D masks option. I wish there was. Photoshop, if you're listening, please. Uh, here's what we want to do, though. We're going to twirl open each of these objects here within our sort of 3D group. And you can see front inflation material. That is that bit on the front. So we're going to create this as our first mask. But we want to do all the letters at once. So I'm going to choose front inflation material. Hold down my commander control click, uh, my commander control key and click uh, for each of these four front inflation materials. There we go. I got all four selected. Here's what we want to do. We want to select illumination and just set it to solid white. All right, hit OK. And then what we want to do is uh, choose the environment here and set the color intensity to zero. All right, just remember it was at 100%. We can move it back to that later if we uh, if we so desire. Um, and now let's uh, let's see what this looks like. Let's go back to our layers. We need to also set the background to the color black. Let's go image adjustments, use saturation, and say, yep, go ahead and make that black. All right, great. So we don't quite have the faces of our letters white. Uh, so let's select these letters again. Go back to the 3D panel. Let's look at this once more. There's uh, illumination. Great. Oh, okay, right, because we have to shut off the lights in the scene. So go ahead and shut off the spotlight and the infinite light. You can see we just have the faces. Now, they're not particularly white, and I have a feeling that I know why. Let's go back to the layers panel. Yeah, sure enough, at some point during the editing, I accidentally reduced the opacity of the layer to 35%. That does need to be at 100%, and when it's at 100%, you can see we have now just solid white letters, and they are pixel perfect. In fact, the selection might even be a little bit too hard, but it's better than it not being hard enough. So we're going to go down to the channels panel. We've got all these channels, and we're going to right-click on the... And it really, you can pick any channel. I'm going to go with the blue channel, just choose Duplicate Channel, and I'm going to name this uh, Faces, and I'm going to output it to a new document. This is very, very important, because we're going to come back and undo everything that we just did to get our nice 3D extrusion back. This is going to allow us to save this because we're just exporting the channel to a separate document and it's not going to be affected when we go and undo all of these, you know, bizarre channels that we're about to make. Um, in fact, well, yeah, whatever, the, the ship's kind of sailed on what I was thinking, but uh, duplicate channel, we're going to save it as, or duplicate it as the name faces and the title of the new document will just be untitled. Go ahead and hit OK. Boom, pops it over to a new document. By the way, if you check it out in our image mode, this is a multi-channel document, not a typical RGB color uh, or even grayscale or anything like that document. It just is going to contain our channel, which we are going to drag back into our original document in just a moment. So let's go ahead and do that for the other faces of uh, our little 3D object here. So turn on and reselect the RGB composite uh, layer or channel, I should say. Select that 3D layer, go to the 3D panel. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and select this front inflation material um, and I'm going to select all of this and I'm just going to make the illumination here. I'm going to take it down to black or whatever. That's just going to hide it. And now I'm going to select the bevel material. So bevel material, bevel material, bevel material, bevel material, and I'm going to set the illumination of this bad boy to solid white. And you're going to see here, if we go back to our layers, select the background layer, boom, there we go. Now we just have our bevels selected. Pretty cool. Go back to channels, right click, duplicate channel. Wonderful. Let's go back to the original PSD. And what I'm going to do at this point is open up my history panel here, and I'm just going to undo and take it back to that master opacity change. Uh, well, you know what, actually, maybe I'll take it back to the 3D light intensity because that sets my background back to that nice uh, medium gray. Turn on the composite channel. Let's go back to the layers. That Remember, that's going to undo our opacity change, so set that sucker back up to 100%. You can see we have a very uh, vibrant and bright uh, set of letters here. Uh, let's go back to environment and we'll set the intensity. Actually, I probably didn't undo quite far enough. Uh, the intensity of this needs to be set back to 100. And what that's going to do is kind of blow out our letters a little bit. You can see they're they're uh, pretty bright. So we're going to select front inflation material of all of these letters. Yeah, yeah and I didn't go back quite far enough. And we're going to select the illumination. We're going to set this to like, I don't know, let's try like 20%, something like that. Go ahead and hit OK. Um, and you can see that it's still pretty blown out. And probably what we want to do is select here next to the diffuse, op the diffuse option and just choose to remove the texture. You're going to see that's going to kind of you know help bring things back into check a little bit. In fact, we can also select the infinite light and reduce maybe the intensity from like 90 down to maybe 65. We go back to our layers panel here. In fact, we can get out of 3D mode. We might have to jump back into 3D mode temporarily later. If you zoom in, you can definitely tell it's very noisy. It's very grainy, but that kind of helps us because our finished text 
needs to be pretty grainy. So we're going to be adding additional grain to this um, effect. So it really doesn't hurt us at all that, uh, that our text is grainy. Before we go any further, let's drag those uh, channels back into our document, get them kind of in place. So here's what you need to do. Go to the new document with the channel, grab the move tool up there, and just gr literally grab the channel like this. Drag it, move it over your PSD, hold down the shift key and drop it in place. That's going to drop it exactly in place. You can go over to the channels panel. You can see there it is. Go ahead and select the composite RGB to move us back to, uh, you know, composite RGB mode. Let's We can close these multi-channel documents, no need to save them. And you can see they did survive that whole undoing spree that we did um, earlier on in this tutorial. Uh, I do want to take a look here at these little wings on the top of these letters. See that little bit of extrusion? We want to mask that away. Let's go here on the M. You can't see it on the M, so that's fine. And we'll probably actually build this extrusion out just a little bit more. We could have done that in the 3D, extended it, but then we would have also extended the extrusion down here. So again, we're really using the 3D as a set of events very, very elaborate guides. Um, so let's just go ahead and take a look at how we can do this. Grab the lasso tool. We want the polygonal lasso tool and just select like right out here and drag a selection into there. I'm gonna drag a selection straight down and go ahead and join the ends. All right, so we make kind of this little selection. Hold on the Alter Option key and click on the new mask icon. It's gonna just drop that little bit away. Now over here, this is a little bit more complex. In order to fill this little bit in, what we'll do is start with the polygonal lasso tool and draw down along the edge like, like that. Fill in just like that. And then go all the way back up to the top and fill it in just like that. What we're going to need to do now to actually fill this in is create a new layer beneath our 3D object. So hold down the Command or Control key. Click on the new layer icon. And I'm going to name this um, M Extra. Uh, extra extrusion, maybe something like that, just so we know what it is. And I'll use my eyedropper tool, sample a light gray, and fill it by hitting Alt Backspace Option Delete on the Mac, Command or Control D to deselect, and that looks great. There's a little bit of a gap there, but you'll see the texture will cover it in the end. We just want to be able to see that completely uh, connected and, and joined that way. Now, this next part with the pyramid texture is rather tedious slash time consuming. So I'm going to end up speeding through a lot of it, but let me show you how this is done. So we're going to drag this uh, pyramid texture over here into our Doom Text PSD. What we need to begin doing with this is mapping it to each side of these letters. So every little face of the letters needs its own little texture. Now, here's a very, very important step. Please remember to do this. You'll thank me later. Make sure you go ahead, right click on this layer and convert it to a smart object. Very important. And I'm also going to duplicate it by hitting Command or Control J, just so I always have a copy of that smart object there. All right, now with this original layer, I'm going to begin by mapping it to the bottom of the letter D here, and we'll work our way around the letter D, and then we'll go O, O, and M. All right, so here's what we want to do. I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to hit Command or Control T to free transform this. And what I want to do is line up this very top corner with the very top corner here of this extrusion. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm just holding down my spacebar key to navigate over. I'm going to drag this bad boy over and place him kind of as pixel perfectly as I can. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the center anchor point and I'm going to move it and place it right there on that corner. And what I can do now is rotate the whole object up just like that. Cool. All right, so now that I've done that, what I want to do is mush this inward a little bit to kind of compress the effect. And what I'll probably need to do is end up skewing it just a touch uh, to really make it work. I'm going to commit this change. We're going to hide this layer. And what we want to do is, again, use the polygonal lasso tool to load this area as a selection. It's just kind of, you know, it's all straight lines, so it shouldn't be too terribly difficult. So I got the polygonal lasso tool. I'm going to begin right here. I'm going to create that straight line all the way down, like so. I'm going to move across this way. Create that line right there. Bam, line right there. And it's just going to be, you know, a series of perfectly straight lines that you want to kind of cover up the faces of, uh, of your, your little extrusion here. All right, so now that we've got that, we can turn that finished pyramid texture layer on. So select that layer and go ahead and add a layer mask. You're going to see it's going to mask that layer to that area. Now it's all kinds of out of whack. The lines aren't right. Nothing is quite right. So here's what we want to do. Unlink this smart object from the mask. This means the mask will just kind of hang out, stick in one spot, and we can free transform the bit of pyramid artwork and have it move kind of underneath that mask. So let's hit Commander Control T. 
Oh, we've got the mask selected, not the layer, so let's uh, get out of that. Select the actual layer. Commander Control T. Now, here's the importance of the smart object. The smart object is saving all of that free transform information that we packed into um, this little bit of, of pyramid texture. The first thing I'm looking at is the texture is way too big, so I'm going to make this a bit smaller. So I'm going to scale it down, 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 maybe something like that. That looks a lot better. And now what we need to do is reorient this, so we'll pull this down. Place it like right there. Okay, see that looks better already. And now you can see that it needs to be skewed because this edge is not right. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and choose skew. And I'm going to skew it this way. All right, that's cool. But you can see we've got an issue here where this line is really not going to line up with that edge. So probably we want to right click and choose distort and just pull this top edge out. Maybe push this bottom edge in until we get, maybe maybe we'll just try to get this line here. You can see that line. We'll try to get that to line up correctly uh, with kind of the, the edge of this little uh, our extrusion here. There we go, that's pretty cool. Uh, maybe not quite as perfect as I'd like it. Let's go there, push and pull, push and pull until it drops right into place. There we go, something like that. And you can also see here along the bottom, this line is not really following the uh, the bottom of the extrusion. So maybe we need to push the whole thing back just a smidge, kind of, sort of, like that. All right, so we can go ahead and commit that change. And we've got the texture here mapped to the bottom of the letter D. So you can see it's a little time consuming. You're going to have to go through and do this with every side of these letters. So what I want to do is I'll just simply duplicate this object, Command or Control J, and I'll dump the layer mask, right? And now because this is a smart object, I could free transform this and in theory get it back pretty close to the original object. I want to leave it the way it is. I'm going to simply rotate this completely straight upright or as close to being straight upright as I can get it. Move it into place here with uh, the side of uh, the letter D here. There we go. That's pretty close. I'm going to nudge it over with my arrow keys. Make sure you have the move tool selected for that. That's pretty good. Uh, and what we want to do is I'm going to line up this bottom corner with the corner of the extrusion right here. So I'm actually going to nudge it out just a smidge, just like that. Bring it down. There we go, something like that. Hit Command or Control T. We're going to zoom out once more. I'm going to move that center uh, rotational point. Right. Actually, you know what? I don't even need to move the center point. What am I thinking? I'm going to right click and just simply go skew. And I'm going to pull this down until it kind of lines up. Uh, with the bit that we just, you know, that we just generated down there, or that we just lined up down there. So, something like that, and let's move this down. Alright, that looks pretty good. We can right click and choose scale, and we want to pinch this up a little bit to make sure we pack the texture in the way it needs to be. Uh, looks like it's covering all the way up the letter D. Alright, great. So now what we need to do is get our selection along the edge of the letter D here. And then all you really need to do is hit the new mask icon. It drops the mask in place. Turn that layer back on. And you can see it's masked perfectly into place. Now, if you do have a small gap, you can see there's a little bit of gray there, right? Our texture just doesn't go down far enough. So what we could do is just delink it from the mask. Select the original layer. Make sure we have the move tool selected. We've selected the contents of the layer. That's what I meant by original layer a second ago. And just nudge it downward one pixel with the move tool. And you can see we've got our texture all the way along the side of the D. Just like that. Great. Looks good. If you need to tweak and adjust, you can expand the mask by, you know, one little pixel up at the top by, you know, using something like the brush tool. Make sure you're painting with the color white. We can click once. Hold down the shift key. Click a second time right there. It's going to soften the edge of the mask and just kind of blend it right in up there. That looks great. And with this bit of artwork, let's link these masks once more. We would then just duplicate this. And, and I'm, what I'm going to do is I'll speed through the letter O, uh, both of the letter O's and the letter M, but we'll go through the letter D here together. All right, so what I'm going to do is duplicate this layer, Commander Control J. Again, I'm just going to ditch that layer mask. We need a brand new layer mask for the uh, little bit of area in here. Let's drag this in. What I'll do is I'm going to align this... Maybe I'll align this with the top, uh, the top corners right up here. All right, how does that look? I'm going to nudge this over a little bit, something like that. And if I zoom out, you're going to see pretty clearly we have that little gray line. That's where the corner is. So we want to hit Command or Control T. All that skewing is already saved, so we just right click and choose Skew again. And this time we grab this side and just drag it upward a little bit. Voila. Well, maybe we'll move it kind of to right there, and we'll just nudge the whole piece of artwork up a couple pixels, something kind of like so. 
And what we may need to do when we mask this in is actually bring the skewing up for the bottom because it really, you can see, needs to be pinching inward. So let's go ahead and use the polygonal lasso tool and just mask this area. Hit the, uh, well, not the trash can, the new mask icon. There we go. Turn this layer back on. Looks good. Nice and straight along that edge. All right, let's unlink it from the mask because, again, we're probably going to transform this again. You can see how uh, the the texture is still just moving in one direction, which actually doesn't look bad. I mean, that kind of kind of sort of looks like how it should be. So just like that, we have that extrusion pyramid texture applied to the letter D. I'm going to speed this screen up right now, and I'm going to knock out O, O, and M, and I'll be back in just a second. All right, we're back. So as you can see, all of this has been sort of manually mapped with a lot of sort of twisting and transforming and all kinds of things like that. What we next want to do is bring in the tech wall uh, texture. I almost said extrusion, but texture. So I'm going to go out to Finder. I'm just going to drag and drop this into here. This is actually much, much faster to go ahead and apply this to our text. We're going to duplicate it a bunch of times, but before we do that, I think I'm going to set the width and height to like maybe 55%. I don't want it to be too small. Um... You know what? I think I'm going to go 50%. Yeah, 50% looks good. We still definitely want to be able to make out the detail uh, rather easily in our texture. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to place it like right here. I'm going to alter option, drag down, and just make sure that it's placed exactly at the bottom of that bit of texture. I'm going to do the same thing here. Dink, dink, dink. There we go. Cool. Now, once we have kind of three across with the texture... What we can do is select all three of those layers, so select here, hold down shift, select the top one, grab a remove tool, hold down alter option, and just drag out. I'm holding down shift as well, it constrains it to a perfect, perfect line. With the move tool, you can just nudge it over until it's pixel perfect, and then we can just repeat this across the whole of our word. And, of course, you can see that it, I mean, you can kind of tell, obviously, that it's the same pattern. What I'm going to do is select the top one of these layers, hold down my shift key, select the bottom of these layers, Commander control G to group them together, and I'm going to name this tech wall, just like that. And now we want to mask it to the face of these letters. So what the way I'm going to do this is by going over our channels, we can just load the faces as a selection, Commander control click that channel, go back to layers, I've got that layer group selected, and simply hit the new mask icon, boom, it is masked to the letters. Now... If you remember with the original logo, we have this straight line cutting through, so we need to mask that off as well. So let's grab the rectangle tool. Just click once, and this create rectangle dialog box will appear. We want our uh, squares to be 800 pixels by 800 pixels. Hit OK. It's going to drop that square right into place. Great. Uh, what I want to do is hit Command or Control T, hold down the Shift key, and rotate this on a perfect 45. See, so now we can kind of set it right in here. All right. I'm going to commit that change. I'm going to hit Command or Control. T again, once I commit the change, you want to commit the change because now our transform handle will load as if this is a diamond shape. And we want to set the height um, to like just below 80%, so like 78%, let's go with. All right, so we'll do this. We'll nu nuzzle this right into place. Maybe I'll reduce the opacity a little bit. You can see it looks like it's actually lining up. Wow, we <laughs> guessed pretty dead on there. Uh, let's bring this like in kind of like right there. Maybe nudge it over a little bit. All right, let's duplicate this rectangle holding down the Alter Option key. Drag it straight over. Yeah, and that looks pretty good. All right, so what we can do is just load both of these rectangles as a selection. Command or Control click on the first thumbnail. Command or Control plus Shift click on the second thumbnail. You can see it loads it as this kind of elaborate Twin Peak selection. We'll go back to that tech wall mask, and we'll just fill this with black. So set black as our foreground color. Uh, Alt, Backspace, Option, Delete on the Mac. There we go. We get rid of the texture, and we have that nice diagonal texture just like that. Now, maybe just preemptively, let's throw a hue saturation adjustment layer on top of this. We'll mask it to the entire layer group by hitting Command, Option, G. That would be Control, Alt, G on the PC. Uh, and let's choose to colorize this. Uh, let's crank up the saturation a little bit. Let's make it almost like bluish purple. So, like maybe right around there. Reduce the saturation a bit. 
something like that. You can see we're really going to start bringing in the colors uh, kind of what the Doom logo should be. It's not really green in that original Doom logo. It's more of this bluish purplish color. Great, we can just delete these uh, rectangles right there, get rid of them. We don't need them in our layers panel. I'm going to save my document so I don't lose anything. So next up, what we need to do is use a copy of our pyramid texture and place it sort of beneath the tech wall. All right, let's turn on this pyramid texture. Uh, let's bring this over and kind of put it in place. Look at that, it actually sort of fits as if it's meant to be like that. Let's drop it right there, cool. What I need to do is drag this beneath the tech wall, but I want it to be above sort of the side textures. And now let's go back to channels, load faces as a selection by command or control clicking on that channel. Go back to layers, and of course just hit the new layer mask icon. We mask that right in place. Now, in order to really sell this effect, again, let's go back to our reference image. We have sort of this soft shadow happening here, uh, as if this tech wall is casting, casting some kind of shadow down on to our pyramid texture. So let's create that now. We're going to do that by using a, let's just go with a curves adjustment layer. And I'm going to pull down on this, make this a bit darker. Nah, eh, I don't want to make it too much darker that way. Let's just keep pulling down on it here. Because I don't want, I really don't want it to be uh, a whole lot. Um, like I don't want to boost the saturation of it. I just want to make it really dark. So something like that is probably good. And what I can do is uh, mask it again to the channel. So we'll go there, and now what we need to do is invert this selection, select inverse selection, and then we're on our layer mask, and we can just fill this with black. Black is our foreground color, great. Commander control D to deselect. Now, part of the issue is you can see it's just making the entire thing dark. So really what we want to do is fill that entire mask with black. So I'll just make the whole thing go away. And what I'll do is I'll load that channel as a selection, and we'll brush this manually. So I'm going to zoom in. Now, of course, as we brush, because I just have the faces of the letters selected, our shadow is going to remain only within uh, our faces. So I'm going to grab the brush tool. And if you don't understand what I'm saying, just follow along here. We're going to reduce the hardness of the brush to zero. We want it to be a nice soft brush. Make the brush size a bit larger. What I need to do is I'm going to make this significantly larger. Let's go like 400 pixels and I'm going to you kind of use the edge of my brush so it's going to be very very soft. All right you can see kind of like that. Very soft. I need to be careful here. There we go. And then something like that. So the M has more shadow than the D has over here. All right, so that's much better. Commander Control D to deselect. You can see there's before, there's after. We're just adding some more shadow. And because we're doing it with a curves adjustment layer like this, if need be, later on down the road, we can always just reduce the opacity a little bit if it's messing with our kind of finished color effect and all the finished contrast and things uh, that we're applying to this text. The next step is going to be to add kind of like a torn metal effect to the edge of the tech wall. Uh, what I'm going to use is just the regular lasso tool, but I'm going to use it on the mask for the tech wall. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to grab the regular old lasso tool, and basically all I'm going to do is come in here and just create kind of a rough edge. So you can see, you can almost like jitter it a little bit, make sure it looks rough, and then you're just going to fill that selection with black. So I just uh, make my make sure my foreground color is black, uh, alt delete op, or alt backspace or option delete on the Mac, and you can see we get this nice cut effect. All right, that looks pretty good, and it's going to be further exaggerated when we go ahead and place the drop shadow beneath this tech wall. In fact, let's go ahead and do that now. Uh, so we're going to do that by loading this mask as a selection. I'm going to alter option, click on the mask. See, there's this little bit of white down here. We want to get rid of that. Grab the brush tool, paint over that to get rid of that. Uh, alter option, click on the mask again to get out of the alpha channel viewing mode. And we're going to command or control click on the mask, load it as a selection. I want to create a layer beneath tech wall. So I'm going to command or control click the new layer icon, and I'm going to call this tech hyphen wall hyphen shadow cool that looks good and what I want to do is just fill this with any color uh, in fact just to illustrate the point let's fill it with hot pink all right so I'm gonna alt uh, alt backspace option delete and you can see I filled it with pink you can't see anything and just to ensure that you can't see anything I'm gonna reduce the fill of this layer to zero percent because we're going to apply a, uh, a layer style to this so what we need to do is go layer layer style drop shadow we're going to create a drop shadow that just goes straight down, and I want this to be blend mode normal, color should be solid black, opacity of 100% is great, and we want to make this a distance of like 2, and we don't want it to be very blurred. 8 pixels is way too much. Uh, let's go with like 2 pixels. You can see it's just a very sharp, hard-edged-ish shadow that's just going to offset the tech wall from the pyramid texture behind it, and really just kind of exaggerate 
uh, that edge and really show off that edge as though the metal has been torn away. Now, to further kind of set off this uh, upper tech wall area, you know what, let's create a new layer above this all. And let's call this uh, tech wall, tech wall hyphen D and B for dodge and burn. And what I want to do here is fill this layer, go edit, fill, and we're going to fill it with 50% gray. And I'm going to set it to a blend mode of overlay. That's going to make the gray disappear. Command, option, or control, alt, and the letter G to just you know, clip it to everything beneath. And what I'll do is grab my polygonal lasso tool here, and I'm going to drag a selection out to about here, and then to about there, and then up, over, 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 and then close off my selection. Let's go back, select, modify. Let's try feathering it by like 65 maybe. And now on this tech wall, dodge and burn, we're gonna open up levels. So we're gonna go image adjustment, uh, adjustments levels, and we're simply gonna darken uh, this a little bit. So I'm gonna drag this this way, and you can see it's gonna sort of start to burn in the tops of the tech wall, almost as though there's a shadow up there uh, in the top part of, uh, of the image or of the text. So there we go, something like that looks good. Uh, Commander Control D to deselect. That's pretty cool, uh, I like that. Now we're gonna brighten the bottom part of the text, basically by doing the same thing with the polygonal lasso tool. Let's select and just drag kind of this selection here, just roughly following, you can see the edge of the torn metal, but just kind of beyond the torn metal. There we go, we're gonna do the same thing here, select. Modify, feather. We're gonna feather a little bit more than 65. Let's go maybe like 90 for this. All right, Command or Control L is the hotkey to bring up levels. And in this case, we're gonna swing the midtone slider the other direction. So I'm gonna swing it toward the black, and we're really gonna boost this and try to brighten up the bottom part of the uh, of the metal, the tech wall. So we're making some really good progress. What I want to do next is go ahead and begin the dodging and burning. It is 3D text because we've been following kind of our 3D template that we created much earlier in this tutorial. But as we begin to dodge and burn, it's really gonna bring out the richness of this 3D extrusion. That's what we're gonna begin doing and we're gonna start with the bevel. So let's add a layer beneath the textures but above the 3D extrusion. Create a new uh, layer here and we're gonna name this bevels uh, color. And I'm going to go channels. I'm going to command or control click to load the bevels channel as a selection. Go back to layers. So now that we've done this, I'm going to go and use a gradient. Now this gradient that I'm using, I'm aptly named Doom Softer, it begins with kind of this bluish purple 5678A8 and then another uh, stop at 20%. And this is the color E86858. Another color stop down here at 50%. This is E87848. Another color stop down here at 70%. This is F8C868. And then another color stop at 100%, and this is F8E9B0. Hit OK. We want this gradient. Hit OK again. And we're going to drag this gradient from the very top, hold down Shift, and drag it all the way down to the bottom of our text. You can see it begins with this purplish blue and fades right through to a light yellow, buttery yellow, all the way down here at the bottom. In fact, Maybe I'll start it like here and actually finish it up here so the bottom parts of our bevel are a little bit brighter. Commander Control D to deselect and you can see our bevel now has this color but the bevel is still very flat. We need to begin shading it so here's the first step to doing that. Well we're going to create a new layer all the way up here on the top and we'll call this, maybe we should call it top of bevel shading, top of bevel shading because we're going to do some kind of shading and highlighting on the very tops of the bevels. So we're going to load the faces channel as a selection. I'm going to go back to my layers. I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to nudge this upward using uh, using my arrow keys, but I need to have a selection tool selected. So I'm going to select the rectangular marquee tool. I'm going to nudge it one pixel, two pixel, maybe like three pixels upward looks good. I'm going to zoom out. Um, and now what I want to do is only load the areas of this selection that are, you know, above the bevel. So the hotkey for that is Command Shift Option and click on the bevels uh, channel thumbnail. That's the select intersecting areas. You can see those are the only areas that have been selected. If I want to be a perfectionist, I can come in here with my polygonal lasso to hold down the Shift key and just extend these edges out. Right. So we're going to come into here and just make sure that we're getting everything that needs to be selected because we did just nudge the body of our um, of our uh, faces upward. So that all looks good. The O's look good. The M probably needs to be adjusted. Yeah, over here needs to be adjusted. 
Uh, there we go. Great. So what I want to do now is just kind of paint over these areas with my brush tool set to a very low opacity on my foreground color black. So make sure black is my foreground color. Grab the brush tool. Uh, 400 pixel brushes may be a little large. Let's go 200, 175, something like that. Soft edges is great. Layers, make sure we're on that top of bevel shading. Um, actually, this is the bottom of the bevel, but whatever. Uh, I'm going to stop fussing with it. I'm going to set the opacity of the brush to 10%, and I'm going to just go in and paint once, paint twice, paint three times, maybe paint four times. So let's go to the O here. One, two, three, four. All right, Command or Control D to deselect. You know, it really makes it look like the bevel now has a bottom side. Now it's a very rough pixelated uh, effect. So if you're a perfectionist, so we'll grab, where's the eraser? Click the letter E to grab the eraser tool. A very small eraser, two or three pixels, and just click once. Hold down your Shift key, click another time there. You can see it's just going to soften these edges. So the next thing we're going to do, and let me just zoom back out here, is we're going to add uh, sort of little lines at the corners and areas, uh, like the edges of our extrusion, where we need them. If I go back to the reference image, you can see how we have these little, you know, these clean little highlights that are kind of at the edges where the light would be catching. So we'll be referencing this to make sure we place them in the right spot. But here's how I do this. Um, I'm going to create another new layer, so just new layer, and I'm going to call this extrusion uh, edge highlights. And we're going to end up setting this layer to a blend mode of overlay, but don't worry about that for now. I'm going to hit the letter D to reset my foreground and background color. Make sure white is my foreground color. I'm going to use the masks that I created when I was placing the textures uh, on my extrusion. So I'm going to Command or Control click to load this area as a selection. Now check this out. We're up on our new extrusion edge highlight layer. Underneath my rectangle tool, I've got a line tool. I'm going to set the weight of my line to one pixel. I'm going to make sure that I'm drawing pixels. All right, my foreground color is white, and all I need to do is drag out uh, a line, and in order to get the perfect placement, hold down the space bar, and you can drag and adjust your line, and you can see I've got a nice, very thin white line that I just dropped in place there. I can do the same thing right here. And what I'll do at this point is just deselect Commander Control D. Um, all right, let's go back to our reference image and check it out. So I'm going to go through real quick and just create all these highlights using that same technique. I'll speed the video up here, um, but you can you know just follow along and knock yours out yourself. All right, great. So we've got our little highlights in place. Uh, we can set the layer blend mode to something like overlay. And basically what that's going to do is the white is going to assume more of a yellowish color. It's going to, you know, adopt some of the, the, the color and texture of the, uh, the material that it's kind of shining on top of, if you will. And it's really going to look good as we pump up the overall contrast of this effect. Next, what we're going to do is begin adding some real depth to our uh, beveled edge. So here's how we're going to do that. Again, we're going to create a new layer, and we're going to call this Bevel Depth uh, D and B for Dodge and Burn. Again, we're going to fill this Edit Fill. We're going to fill it with a 50% gray. Beautiful. I'm going to set this to the blend mode of overlay. You can also use soft light. Overlay is a little punchier. I, I tend to like it more. Um, and here's what we're going to do. We're going to begin. I'm just going to start right down here at this corner. I'm going to use my polygonal lasso tool, and I'm going to select a straight line out of the corner here, something like so. And maybe I'll select up. Maybe like that big of an area. All right. Now, obviously, we only want our darkening area or darkening agent to affect the kind of the, the bevel. So what we need to do is load that intersecting area again. Command, Shift, Option, or Control, Shift, Alt on the PC and click on the bevels layer thumbnail. See that? Just trims us right to that little area. We go back to layers. And here's where we're going to use the dodge and burn tool. So I'm going to start with the burn tool. And I'll just click a few times in here. And it's going to really darken that area up. And then when I Command or Control D to deselect, you can see we have now a kind of a corner on our bevel and it's going to look you know it's going to be even more noticeable the more we do it with each of the corners and we can even use our reference image we can see here like the top area is a little darker than the bottom area so with you know having that in mind when I load this selection here with my uh, polygonal lasso tool I'll go through and I'll load a selection moving up this way and I'll simply burn this so go back to channels load that intersecting area I'm still on my uh, my bevel and emboss, dodge and burn, and I'll just click this a couple times, just like that, 
and then deselect. And you can see it's very subtle, but it's a really nice little effect. And uh, in fact, one of the things that we can do is if we still have that area selected, I can just invert this selection. Let me actually get rid of this little bit of selection out here. So I can invert this selection, Command Shift or Control Shift I, and then I can go Channels, and I can just select the intersecting areas, and uh, it'll allow me to select this area down here. So with Dodge and Burn, I can use my Dodge tool, and I can just brighten that up just to, like just a kiss as it runs into that corner. It's a little bit too much. Let me reduce my exposure here. There we go. As it runs into that corner. And then it'll further accentuate that beveling. So now what I'm going to do is, uh, once again, I'm going to speed this video up. I'm going to go over all these corners that need beveling. Again, I'm going to use my reference image here and just make sure that I'm darkening what needs to be darkened and brightening up what needs to be brightened up. And I will be back in just a second. So next up, let's create another new layer here. Create a new layer now that we've finished that. And I'm going to name this Bevel Splits because what we're going to do is we're going to quickly run over any any corner turn in every just about every part of our bevel and just drop a little kind of accentuation uh, into it. And I'll show you what I mean here. Again, we're going to use the Line tool. But instead of the foreground color being white, we're going to make sure the foreground color is black. And right off the bat, we can just load our bevels as a selection. So I'm just command or control clicking on uh, that bevels channel. All right. And I'm going to zoom in here and make sure I've got my line tool selected. And I'll just drag a little black line over any area that I feel like needs just this is going to be very subtle in the final finished effect, but it definitely makes a difference. And again, feel free to reference, um, you know, either a copy of the Doom logo or just kind of follow along with what I'm doing here. But I'm going to lean on a reference image that I have. It's actually a copy of the logo that I've already made that I thought looked pretty good. Cool. All right, so I'm going to deselect Command or Control D, and then I'm just going to set this to the blend mode of like overlay, and I'll probably even reduce the opacity to like, I don't know, 40, 50%. 50% probably looks good. I'm going to take the eraser tool through here, just looking at it. I'm not digging it. I feel like it's going to be too much. Eraser tool, opacity of 100%. We can just very, very quickly erase anything that's up there that, that is distracting. Cool. Up here on the top of the, uh, the top of the bevels, on the top parts of the D and the O, let's just drop some lines in there. Great. All right, cool. So that, that's good. We'll deselect. We're going to move on now and really start working on the actual edges of the bevels themselves, adding some lightness and darkness and shadowing uh, just to kind of build them out the way they need to be built out to really complete this effect. So next up, what we want to do is begin with the the very, very subtle shadow on sort of the inside of this bevel. So we're going to be placing some highlights and shadows on the bevel slash around the bevel. So here's how we're going to do this here. I'm going to go channels. Uh, and I'm going to load my faces as a channel here. And I'm going to contract this by two pixels. So I'm going to go select, modify, contract. And I'm going to choose, there we go, contract it by two pixels. You're going to see it's going to pull it right in. Then I want to inverse the selection. Select inverse. Now I want to just select the little tiny bit that's selected. So right now everything except these center areas of the letter are selected. But that also means that there's a little two pixel area that's selected. So if I choose to select just the intersecting areas by command shift option or control shift alt clicking faces, you can see that it's just going to select a little two pixel area uh, ringing at each side of each of the faces of my letters. This is great because what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this with black, but I need to create a new layer. So I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to call this uh, inner shadow, something like that. Uh, in fact, I'll probably end up dragging this down beneath some of this stuff, uh, but it, it looks good here. I'm going to fill it with black. Option delete, that'd be alt backspace on the PC, command or control D to deselect. Now that looks pretty rough the way it is, don't worry. The first thing we'll do is set it to a blend mode of soft light, which is going to soften it up, help blend it in quite a bit. We are also going to create a mask here, and particularly I just want to soften the way it's interacting around our center, uh, the holes cut in the middle of the D and the letters O. So I'm going to grab my brush tool, right click, make it quite a bit larger, drop the hardness. Make it maybe a little bit smaller than that. All right, I want to paint with the color black. I've got a mask here, and I'm just going to paint away some of this stuff. I don't want to make it go completely away, though, so maybe reduce the opacity of the brush down to about 50%-ish. There we go. 
All right, so that looks a lot better, something like that. And then I'll do the same thing here with the O. And I'll do the same thing with the second O. So this is very touch and feel. I'm going to do the same thing with the tops of the uh, these points here on the M as well, maybe the bottom part of that, uh, something like that. And you can see it looks a little jagged, and it's because our initial selections were so sharp, pixel perfect, which is usually a good thing. Again, I'm not too concerned about that because when we add our noise, it's going to help blend some of that together. We are going to manually blend a little bit on the edges here with the eraser tool, and you'll see how I do that uh, in just a moment. Uh, but before we go much further, I want to do another kind of darkening effect, but I need this to be on the outside edge of my actual bevel. So what I need to do is load both the faces and the bevels as a selection. So I'm going to command or control click on the faces channel, of course, and then command shift or control shift the bevels uh, channel and it loads the whole shebang as a selection. And I'm going to go select, modify, contract this bad boy by two pixels. We're going to inverse the selection just like we did before. And now all we need to do is command shift option or control shift alt click the bevels uh, channel and just select the inverse uh, or the, the intersecting areas, excuse me, and it's going to select the, the, the inverse selection, but just a two pixel selection on the kind of the edge of everything. We're going to go ahead and create a new layer. And I'm going to call this maybe outer shadow bevel, something like that. And I'm going to fill this with black. So option delete, all back based on the PC, command control D to deselect. You can see very chunky, very kind of not super attractive. Set it to a blend mode of soft light. It's going to help blend it in a lot. It's going to add a lot of shape to our bevel. There's way too much of it up here at the top. It's really uh, really not doing us a lot of favor. So let's add a layer mask, grab our brush tool. We're going to make the brush tool rather large, painting with black, up the opacity 100%. And let's paint right across the top, to right to, just to begin with, just to get rid of that. And then maybe what I'll do is come in, in here and maybe click once in the middle like of each letter to kind of just blend. So it's going to blend to kind of this dark, uh, dark edge of the bevel up toward the top where we wouldn't expect to see that darker edge because in fact there's gonna be a highlight up there remember we have that spotlight pointing downward on us so that looks good so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna create a new layer and i'm gonna call this uh split hyphen bevel highlight there we go and i'm gonna move up here to my text and what i want to do is i want to select one pixel along the top of my text just where the dark part of the bevel meets the light part of the bevel so i'm gonna grab my uh, rectangular marquee tool and i'm gonna create click right there and just click and drag across up it just it, i mean it needs to be one one pixel kind of uh selection right across there now i'm gonna hold down my shift key and i'm gonna do the same thing here for the top of the o Right. So now that we have this going all the way across our uh, our text, what we can do is grab the brush tool. I'm going to zoom in here. I'm going to grab the brush tool, and I'm going to make it a bit smaller. Uh, 160 might be a little bit too small. Uh, something like 250 works well, I think. Make sure foreground color is white. And maybe click once, click twice. And there we go. We've dabbed our first highlight along there. Click once, click twice. But very important that this is a very soft edge brush. It's going to really add to that effect of like this really dynamic looking highlights hitting the top of our text. I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller for this highlight. Click once, click twice. Once, twice. There we go. Cool. Once we've done that command or control D to deselect, we've got that little highlight. We can just set this to layer to the blend mode of overlay. So it's going to give us this nice kind of, you know, sharper highlight at the top of the letters. I really want that highlight at the top of the logo to be nice and crisp and sharp. When you have crisp, sharp highlights, it just makes the whole effect look so much better. All right. So next, we want to create another highlight along the top of the text. Uh, this one's going to be sort of like a two-pixel selection along the top uh, of our type. So maybe what I'll try to do... Yeah, let's just let's go for it. Command or control click the faces and command or control shift click the bevels to load everything again. And what I think I'll do is we'll nudge this selection downward two pixels. So grab any selection tool, just use the down arrow key now, one, two, cool. And we will inverse this selection, go select inverse, and then we will go channels and command shift option or control shift alt and click the bevels layer. You can see it's going to leave us with this nice selection across the top of all of our letters here. Uh, we want to create a new layer. So go new layer. We're gonna, we'll call this top most highlights. Great. And we'll grab our brush and I'm going to make my brush tool a bit larger. I'll click once, click twice, and I'm going to click once, twice there, once, twice there. All right, cool. So if I deselect and I leave that, you can see we have another sharp highlight along the top part of the M. And we'll try setting this to overlay as well. Again, we want that sharpness. We want that crispness. That's really nice. Let's use our little eraser technique to smooth out these highlights, and then we'll duplicate them. So grab the eraser tool. We want to set the size of the eraser to three pixels, hardness at zero. And then I'm just going to click once here, hold down my shift key, and click again right there. Just going to soften up this highlight a touch. Something like that. And now we'll, you know, when we duplicate it, it's not just going to look super jaggy and pixely. The same thing there. Whoop, we took away too much of it. Let's try that again. There we go. Something more like that.
All right, great. So there we go. I soften that up. That looks good. Now I'll try duplicating this Commander Control J. We have a much more natural looking highlight. Just reduce that opacity a little, little, little bit. That looks good. All right, cool. So we've got a nice strong highlight across the top of our type. I'm going to go ahead and save this uh, document. Now the next thing that we want to do is go ahead and paint in the dual edged highlights on all of the bevel uh, wherever it is needed. Now this is what's going to need to be softened and it's much easier to soften an effect like this if you paint it with pixels and then either mask it or use the eraser tool as I've been saying all along. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. Go over here to the channels panel and command or control click to load the bevels. We're going to go select, you got it, modify, contract, contract by two pixels. We've done this a million times, right? And then we're going to go ahead and inverse this selection. We're going to select inverse and then we're just going to load the intersecting area. So command shift option or control shift alt and click on the bevels channel thumbnail. All right, so now we have all of these very, very small, very precise selections all around our bevels. Now, probably the best thing to do is to begin painting just the bits of highlight that we want. So here's where a reference image becomes helpful. I can see that we kind of want to highlight up here and then probably run that highlight all the way down and probably along the front part of the D. And in fact, most of the middle of the D is going to get a highlight except for the inner part of the bottom bevel there. So most of the D is going to end up getting a uh, highlight. So we're going to go layers. We need to create a new layer, of course, and I'm going to call this uh, bevel... Oh, well, helps to double click the layer. Let's go bevel uh, double highlights or something, Maybe bevel side highlights, whatever. Let me go grab the brush tool. I'm not going to use the pencil tool yet. I just need to make the brush tool very, very small. Make like two pixels. Click once here. Drag all the way up to here. Hold down shift. Click another time right there. Great. Let's go ahead and just add a highlight right here along the base of that. And then bring a highlight out here. Uh, where it's going to kind of meet our, our pre-existing highlight, if you will. Um, we don't have a highlight on the inner part of that bevel, so let's come over to here where we have, we're going to have a highlight on the outside portion of the bevel here. All right, so I think I have all of the sort of double bevel highlight where I want it to be. Commander Control D to deselect. Now, as you can see, it's very, very rough. It looks very pixelated. So now it's time to take the eraser tool and go in and really soften this stuff up. So you take the eraser tool. It's just a three pixel uh, sized eraser with a hardness of zero. We're on this layer. We're not masking it. We're just going to go in. You click very close to the edge just like that and just let the softness of the edge of the eraser do the work. You're really not looking to erase much of the highlight at all. You're just looking to soften the edge of the highlight, make it look a little bit more realistic. So just click and then shift and click and it's going to soften that edge up nicely sometimes more perfectly in some areas than others. You can also just get rid of little areas that are not supposed to have any highlight, so the highlight has a nice sharp fall off where it's supposed to, you know, fall off. All right, so now that we've uh, kind of smoothed all of that out with the eraser, I don't really want to set this to any particular blend mode. I do want to preserve that strong brightness. What I will probably do to blend it a little bit is maybe reduce the opacity to like 70, 80. Let's go 80%, 79%, whatever. I'm going to save this now. Now at this point, when everything's looking good, what I want to do is go back and do the rest of kind of the dodging and burning. We got kind of carried away with the bevels, and we really want to get the bevels right. But we want to do some dodging and burning, or really just burning, on the extrusions here to really start to blend all this together a little bit. So I actually think maybe we should just do this in uh, the actual uh, folders of these uh, these textures. It might just be easier to load everything up and, and paint with it. Let's grab a curves adjustment layer here. And well, actually, no, let's let's load the extrusions as a selection and then we'll go and choose a curves adjustment layer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull down on this, down on this, down on this to darken. And you can see it's just darkening the, the letter D because we're just working here with these uh, with these letters. There's really nothing else to darken or the other letters are kind of on top of uh, everything else. 
something kind of like that. And we'll duplicate this curves adjustment layer. Uh, so that looks good. And now what, what we need to do is really we can just fill this entire mask with black since we can see kind of what we're doing. And we're going to load each area of our extrusion as a selection by just loading that mask. Now I want to be painting on the mask for this curves adjustment layer. Oh, and real quick, I should mention, I'm just reselecting this area over here on the side of the letter D, because when you have something like this where it's supposed to appear like a kickback, and we're going to do it here with the M, you really want to make sure you get a strong shadow on the interior part of that to give the illusion that the bottom kind of flares out a little bit. So I'm going to grab the brush tool, I'm going to set the opacity to like 60, and I'm going to click once, and then hold down shift and click again. And you can see when I zoom out, it's just going to give that illusion that there's a bend there at the bottom of the letter D. It's a kind of a cool little effect, something to you know, file away in your back pocket. Hard to believe, but we are almost finished. So we're going to uh, go ahead and add a color balance adjustment layer, but I think I'm going to do this by loading everything as a selection. So command, uh, shift, select, yeah, select everything. Let's load it all as a selection. And then we're going to choose color balance layer. And you can see we've added that. But what I don't want to do is I don't want this color balance to affect uh, the tech wall area. So I'm going to load that area as a selection, just like so. In fact, I can load the, I can use the wall shadow layer to load as a selection, make sure I get the jaggedy edge as well. Uh, I'll go up here to color balance and I'll just fill this with black. So make sure black's in the foreground color. Uh, option delete, all facts based on the PC command control, DDD select. All right, so now with this uh, color balance adjustment layer, what I'm looking to do, generally speaking, is boost reds, magentas, and yellows, but I will be looking to boost some blues in the highlights. So here with mid-tones, let's boost reds, and we're looking to make this relatively saturated because the way we're doing this, um, we're going to need to have a lot of additional color pumped into uh, this logo. So here in the shadows, add some red. Uh, there we go, some more magenta, a little bit more yellow. Cool. And I know it's looking way oversaturated. Don't worry. I'm going to add some blues into the highlights, a little magenta into the highlight, a little red into the highlight. A little too much magenta there. All right, there we go. Cool. So we've got color balance adjustment layer, and you can see what kind of difference that's making. It's pretty crazy. Next, we're going to work on the tech wall a little bit more. So I'm going to load that as a selection, and I'm going to use a hue saturation adjustment layer. Remember, we added that hue saturation just adjustment layer earlier. Let's try boosting this. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Let's set it to colorize and set this to about 330. And the saturation... Pump it up a little bit, and then maybe just darken it a little bit. Maybe take it down to like 10, something like so. Uh, because I, th I feel like there should be a little bit more purplish magenta tones up in there. Let me take it back a little bit off 330, 315, 30 saturation, maybe like negative 10 just to round things off in the brightness department. And you can always reduce the opacity as well. Again, every time you create a text effect like this, there's so many moving parts that it's going to, it's always going to look a little different. All right, so we got our hue saturation adjustment layer. And next to tone everything back, we just want to add a black and white adjustment layer. Uh, and what I'm going to do, oh, you know what, I probably should have loaded everything as a selection, right? So let's go back to channels, let's load all this up. Hit OK. That's my mistake. Command Shift when you select everything. I was uh, I was doing a much different hotkey. All right, we're gonna go ahead and add a black and white adjustment layer. Great. Uh, and really, all we need to do here is just set the opacity to like 15%. So this is just gonna kind of flatten things, tone things down just a little bit. Uh, generally has like a calming and moody type of uh, I don't know how to describe it, but it looks good. And next, what we're going to do is infuse a little bit more contrast into the face of uh, the, the logo. So here's what we're going to do. You double click on your quick mask mode and just make sure you have selected areas uh, as what the color will indicate. The default is masked areas. We want selected areas because what we're going to do is grab, well, with, when we're in quick mask mode, grab your brush tool. And we want to make sure the opacity is set to uh, 100 because we want a fully opaque selection. And I'm painting with black. Black is what you want to paint with. I'm going to just go ahead and paint a selection over sort of the bottom portion of the letters. Kind of something like that, all right? We hit the letter Q, it's gonna load that as a selection. We can feather it a little bit if we want, so we can go select, modify, feather, and maybe we will we'll feather it like 100 pixels. Let's see if that's, yeah, that'll, that'll probably work for our, our cause. Uh, now we wanna select just the areas above the face of the lettering. So I'm gonna hold down Command, Shift, Option, this would be Control, Shift, Alt, and click the 
faces channel. You can see we just have that nice little selection there. Go back to layers, add a levels adjustment here, and open this up just a little bit. So we're looking to just add a little brightness there to the bottom part of the type. Maybe just overall add some contrast to the bottom part of the type. So there's before, there's after. You can see it's just pumping it up a little bit, not too bad. And I think we'll do kind of a similar thing for the extrusion, uh, the extruded edges there, just to again pump the contrast. Um, so what I'll do is I'll duplicate this levels, um, this levels adjustment layer by hitting Command or Control J, and just get rid of the mask. All right, and yeah, delete the layer mask. I don't care. And we're going to just hide that levels adjustment for a second. We're going to enter back into Quick Mask mode, and we're going to paint. Uh, we're going to paint over a similar area. Maybe we'll make our brush a little bit smaller. All right, so I'm going to paint from there to there. I'm just holding down my shift key and just bouncing off these peaks. Great. Maybe I'll even come into here a little bit. Over to here. Down. Across. Something like that. Hit the letter Q. And we'll go select. We'll just, we'll feather this by like, I don't know, 30 pixels. Something uh, relatively tame. And what we'll do is we'll go back to channels. And again, this time we're just going to select the extrusion. So not the faces. So command shift option or control shift alt and click on the thumbnail for the extrusions. And we're going to go layers and uh, turn on our levels adjustment layer and just hit the add new layer mask icon and it's going to add a new layer mask and you can see we're just kicking some light into the bottom of our extrusions just like that just helps again we're just helping make this pop set this effect off a little bit i feel like i haven't looked at this camera much through this tutorial i've been locked in over here it's taken long enough isn't it we're almost done we're almost done uh, all right so Next up, we need to apply a vibrance adjustment to the the bevels. So the bevels are they're they're pretty lit up. They're pretty bright. They're pretty saturated. So let's just tone them back a little. We're going to channels, uh, Commander Control, click on bevels, and add a vibrance adjustment layer, and just tone back uh, the vibrance. Maybe negative 15, negative 20, something something in that neighborhood. That looks good. So there's before, there's after. It's just toning that stuff back, kind of helping it fit with the image a little bit better. And next, we're going to use a curves adjustment layer just to kind of flatten out the contrast a little bit. So again, we're going to load, uh, you know what, we can probably just command or control click on the black and white uh, layers mask and go curves. We're going to boost the black point a little bit and we're going to drop the white point a little bit. You can see all that's going to do is just flatten things out, reduce a little contrast. It's a nice kind of beginning of retroifying effect. And as you look at it, if you think that you kind of need to brighten up certain areas, you can always add another curves adjustment. Um, and in this case, again, I'll probably boost the black point again, but I'll quickly pull down to keep, you know, darker areas, you know, relatively dark, uh, and then pull up over here on some of the lighter areas. Um, again, there's, it definitely looks like it's too saturated, but we'll see when we drop it over a new background in a moment. I'll spike the really spike the highlights a little bit there by dragging the white point back this way. All right, you can see there's before, there's after. So it's just kind of this really, uh, really sharp, snappy mid-tone punch. And next what we want to do is add some grain. Grain is going to help kind of blend our effect together a little bit. So here's what we do. We create a new layer and we go ahead and go edit fill to fill the layer with 50% gray, contents 50% gray, great. Make sure our foreground and background color are black and white, go filter, noise, add noise, we're gonna fly through this quick, 15%, great, beautiful, love it. Commander Control J to duplicate this grain, and we're gonna hit Commander Control T, right click, choose flip horizontal. We're just looking to mix the grain up, we want this grain to look natural. All right, we're gonna hit Commander Control J again, Commander Control T, set the width to 250%, the height to 200%, Enter a return a couple times to commit that change. Uh, now, we have a massive amount of grain. If I hit Commander Control T, you can see all this extra stuff. It's just going to be adding to our file size. So what I like to do is go Select All and just duplicate, like copy this selection up to a new layer by hitting Commander Control J. Now, when I hit Commander Control T to bring up Free Transform, you can see our big noise is just the area in our image, which means that this other bloated big noise layer, I can delete that layer uh, if that was confusing. Just rewind the video, watch through it uh, a second time. It's not that complicated, but again, I'm flying through this because let's get this effect finished. All right, I'm going to name this layer Big Grain. I'm going to name this layer Flipped Grain. And I'm going to name this layer Small Grain. All right, well, if I can smell the, spell the word small, there we go. All right, so with Big Grain, I'm going to set this layer to a blend mode of soft light. Flipped Grain, I'm going to set this layer to a blend mode of soft light. And Small Grain, I'm going to set this layer also to a blend mode of soft light. Now, if we zoom in, we can see we've got some crazy grain action going on. Really, all we need to do is set the opacity of like each of these layers to, you know, 10, 12 percent. So I'm going to go small grain, 12 percent. Flipped grain, I'll do like 15 percent. And big grain, I'll do like 10 percent. 
Uh, now with the small grains, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll up that a little bit. Let's go like 20 for that. And let's go maybe like 25 for that. All right, cool. So you can see if I shut these layers off, there it is without grain. Turn it on. There it is with grain. I think I actually need more opacity on the small grain. Crazy as that sounds. But that's going to be really important, that grain, because that's what's going to make um, this, these, the stone, the metallic, the rocky effects begin to look real. And it's really going to help blend your colors together for the final finished effect. Really, really important to have grain. Can't emphasize it enough. All right, now, obviously, we have an issue here with the grain because it's going all over the place. So let's just select big grain. Hold down shift. Select small grain. Commander control G to group that. Let's name the group grain. And let's just hold down alter option and drag that mask up and drop it on the grain layer. There therefore masking all of the grain just to our text. So I have a different background here. I'm going to go to my finder. I've got this apocalypse background. I'm going to drag it into Photoshop here, open this sucker up. You can see it's just this, you know, crazy image. I got it from some stock photo website, but, you know, Google Images, find some apocalypse type image uh, that you like. And we're going to go ahead and drag our doom text into here. But the way I want to do this is I'll just shut off the background image and all right, where else am I getting gray? Uh, maybe I'm getting some gray from here. Nope. Oh, from the bevel. That's where I'm getting gray. Um, all right, so let's mask the bevel just to the bevel area or just to our text. So let's go to channels. Let's load everything here as a selection and slap this mask on the bevel uh, dodge and burn layer. Go ahead and add that layer mask. There we go. So now we have just our doom text over a transparent background. Command shift option or control shift alt in the letter E. Bam, we pop it up to its own layer. I'm going to drag this over into the background apocalypse background. Look at how low contrast all of a sudden it looks when compared with this very rich background. Uh, I'm going to scale this upward a little bit. I know technically we're going to degrade the quality of the image a little bit, but I'm going to scale up, 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 something like that. I'm going to hit command or control A. I've got the move tool selected. I'm going to align this to the horizontal and vertical centers. All right, so obviously we need to do a little bit of work to this image um, as far as blending these two bits together. Now, in order to save a little time, I just created a little bit of an effect here. I'll walk you through it real quick. Threw a photo filter on that was just the color red set to a density of about 80%. You can see that's just making the background kind of a little bit more red. I threw a color balance adjustment layer looking to pump reds, a little magenta, and a bit of yellow. Kind of what we did to the Doom text itself. I threw a gradient map on here. It's set to the blend mode multiply, reduced the opacity to about 30%. It's just this gray to gray uh, gradient, and basically it's just adding some contrast, deepening the color colors. And then I threw a selective color on here where I'm basically looking to infuse the blacks with some uh, some red, which is the opposite of cyan, and some magenta and some blue, which is the opposite of yellow. Whoop, you can see there. Uh, and also here in the neutrals, I added a little bit more red, magenta, and yellow. So that's what I did there to the background. Um, now with the Doom text, I can add a few more adjustment layers. In fact, I'll figure that out and then I'll jump back and show you what I added to help blend the Doom text a little bit. All right, so we're back. Here's what I did. I added a brightness contrast adjustment layer because they're simple and easy. Reduce the contrast a little, boost the brightness a little. Then I added a hue saturation layer. Now the hue saturation layer, I ticked on colorize. I left the hue at zero, which means we're colorizing it with red. Boosted the saturation to about 65 and then reduced the lightness a bit until it looked good. So you can see there's before, there's after. That really helps bring it kind of into line with our background a little bit. Then, oh, and I also set the blend mode to soft light, by the way, which is going to help pump the, um, the overall contrast that this adjustment layer is, is sort of inflicting upon our type. Uh, then I've got a uh, a, a color balance adjustment layer here. And what I've done is I've started looking to infuse some cyan into the Doom logo. I think it kind of adds a neat touch to add some cyan, nothing really to the shadows um, and the highlights. You can see I just poured a little bit more cyan and a little bit more yellow into the highlights. So mid-tones, some cyan, some magenta, and a little bit of blue. Uh, and that looks pretty good. Now, we want to create a drop shadow for this. So we can create a simple drop shadow uh, by just Command or Control clicking on this. This is the way I like to do it, at least. I don't like to use just a straight drop shadow with layer styles because the drop shadow needs to be um, so big. In this case, it, it, we're going to begin to see it kind of on the sides of our text effect. So what I'm going to do is just load the Doom text as a selection. Command or Control click on the new layer icon. Uh, that's going to place a layer beneath, and we're going to name this layer Shadow. Now, we're going to fill our uh, our shadowy area with just black. We could do like a very, very deep red. Maybe we'll do a very deep red, something like that. Option, Delete, Alt, Backspace if you're on the PC. Command or Control D to deselect. And now what we're going to do is just shift this shadow straight down. So I've got the Move tool selected. I'm going to hold down my Shift key and just use the uh, down arrow key just to nudge, 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 nudge that down, something like so. 
Um, and you can see bits of the shadow are going to be exposed up here. We're going to get rid of all that in just a moment. I'll show you how to do that. We want to go filter, blur, motion blur. And we want to blur this straight up and down. Yeah, like an angle of 90 is perfect. And a distance of 150, um, that actually looks... That looks pretty solid. Um, maybe let me try 100, maybe a little, yeah, a little bit smaller. 100 actually looks, I think, better. Go ahead and hit OK. And then what we're going to do is throw a, a uh, layer mask onto that layer, grab our brush tool, set the opacity of the brush to like 100%, uh, percent, and I'm just going to paint away the bits of red up there, which if, uh, it essentially is going to get rid of any bit of shadow that is up there. All right, so now I'll set this layer to the blend mode of like multiply. You can see it basically makes it black. I can reduce the opacity a little bit if needed. That looks pretty good. And last but not least, uh, just create a new layer. New layer, and we'll name this flares just to add some flares. Uh, grab the brush tool, right click. I am going to load in my own personal set of flares here. They're just some flares I've collected over the years. Um, if I knew where you could go to download them, I would throw a link in the description, but I really don't know where they came from. I'm going to grab like this flare. Um, by the way, you can find flares all over the web. Uh, just you know, brusheasy.com. They've got all kinds of great stuff there too. I'm going to tick on Shape Dynamics. We're going to change the angle jitter just a little bit. So sort of the, the optical uh, lens flare coming off of this actual flare, um, you know, changes angle slightly. And what I want to do is set my blend mode here to color dodge. And I'm going to use my alter option key to sample colors from my bits of text. So I'll take like a light yellow. Make my uh, flare a bit smaller. I don't want the, the you see the, the lens flare is kind of shooting out straight to the right. I don't like that, so I'm going to click once over here so the auto jitter will readjust it. Oof, that's a little bit too bright. Let me choose like a darker orange. Let's try something like that. There we go, a nice little orange flare for there. That's a little bit too, uh, too bright. There we go, that's nice. Let's go for something there, and then maybe something a little bit brighter down here uh, on the tip. Let's try, let's try that again, something a little brighter. Ooh, that's just so bright. Makes it so hot. I'm going to make this quite a bit smaller, I think. There we go, something like that. That's pretty cool. And let's go with like a, a lightish purple color. Uh, maybe a middle purple. There we go. And just drop a, a little lens flare up there. Maybe a bigger lens flare. Meh. I don't know that I dig that quite as much as I thought I would. Maybe I need a lighter pink. Something like that, maybe. There we go. Something like that. Let's try that. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Um, and then I'll make a smaller, you know, smaller and throw a couple flares around uh, where maybe they need to be. That These obviously aren't in the original logo, but hey, you know what? It's not too shabby. So there you go. That is how you create the iconic Doom logo in Photoshop. I kind of love the way it looks. You know, there's a few things that I would adjust. I think the shadow under the tech wall, uh, the big soft shadow maybe needs to be adjusted a little bit. It's, I think, a little too heavy. Um, but, hey, practice makes perfect. And every time you do this, it's going to be a little bit different. But I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. So much effort went into this. You know, typically I have my little system here. I've never showed anybody this. My little system of what it takes me to put together a tutorial. Typically, it takes me 16 hours and 45 minutes to put together a tutorial. This tutorial took over 40 hours, so an insane amount of effort went into this, but I'm so happy with it. Please share this uh, video tutorial with your friends. Anybody who you think might be interested, I would be uh, so grateful for you uh, if you did that. Again, I hope you enjoyed it. So for creating the original, the amazing Doom logo in Photoshop, and the 3D, and the texturing, and the pyramids, and rocks, and metal, and tech walls, and flares, and shadows, and the eraser tool, and what felt like a hundred thousand other things. That's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, I'll catch you in the next one.